Welcome to the Mur welcome to the Murfreesboro City Council meeting. It's January 19th. Um, if you will, I'm going to handle our prayer and our pledge. If you'll bow your head, uh, Father, I thank you for this night. Um, I thank you for those prayers that are spoken and unspoken. Uh, Lord, I I pray for our law enforcement officials in our town who, um, Lord, see things that none of us would want to see. I pray for the families in our town that are hurting. Uh, Lord, I pray for healing. Pray for guidance. And most of all, for compassion. Uh, give us the ability to make the decisions that are before us tonight in a way that's fitting to represent the citizens of Murfreesboro. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. We have a STARS Award. Good evening, Mayor and City Council members. I'm here this evening to recognize the recipient of the STARS Award for the month of December. As you know, the purpose of the STARS Award is to recognize and reward those employees who go above and beyond their normal job duties in providing outstanding customer service both to our internal and external customers. Often, the level of service means being kind and concerned for others. The recipient of the December Stars Award is Ms. Marlene Belcher, and she did just that. She showed a level of concern and kindness for a five-year-old little boy. Marlene has been with the city now since September of 2021 as a transit operator for our public transportation department. Marlene was nominated for the STARS Award by her manager, Mr. Billy Ward. Following is a brief description of why she's being recognized tonight. On December the 9th, while driving her Murfreesboro transit bus, Marlene observed a five-year-old little boy walking in the street on uh, South Church. She pulled over to talk with this young boy. The young boy was headed to his grandmother's house. As she sat down with him, she also notified the police. She stopped her route to assist this boy. He actually was missing, and, had, and no one had reported it. The Murfreesboro police came and helped the young man. Marlene displayed an act of kindness to this young boy who was wandering in the street. She definitely went above and beyond her job. I can't imagine what could have happened to this young man if Marlene hadn't come along. Mayor and council, it's apparent to me that Marlene is just a kind and generous person with a caring spirit. Ms. Marlene Boucher, the city of Murfreesboro is blessed to have someone like you working for the organization. So with that said, on behalf of the city of Murfreesboro, it is my pleasure to honor and to recognize as the Stars Award winner for the month of December, Ms. Marlene Boucher. Marlene. Before we get to consent agenda, Mr. Tyndall, I'm going to put you on the spot. You sent us an email, I think it was yesterday, about um, Mr. Gary Whitaker retired um, after 35 years of service to the city, and, and I wanted you to introduce his Hopefully he's person here. who's – he was All right, here. he's not – He's still working. He might. He might be. Okay. Uh, but uh, Sam Huddleston, who we all know and who uh, has been at the podium for many, many times, and so uh, citizens probably know him pretty well too, uh, was promoted from executive director for community development to assistant city manager, effective the 17th. And so uh, we're excited about all. He's he's contributed a substantial amount to the city. He brings a vast knowledge that's important for economic development and other aspects. So we're. Very excited to have Sam in that 
in that role. Great. All right. All right, we'll move to the consent agenda. You have five items on your consent agenda. Is there anything that needs to be removed? So move. Second. Motion a second. <coughs> Ms. Brown, please call the roll. Ms. Saverwater? Aye. Ms. Kells Harris? Aye. Mr. Maxwell? Aye. Vice Mayor Shacklett? Aye. Mr. Wright? Aye. Mayor McFarland? Aye. All right, we'll move into old business. You have ordinance 22 OZ 18, zoning for property along Highway 99. This is second and final reading. I'd like to make a motion to defer this to a later date. I understand that we're actually looking at annexing that roadway. And at this time, we still do not have the interlocal agreement. So I'd make a motion to defer this uh, so that at that time, uh, it'll come before council that we'll have the roadway and this particular property and the interlocal agreement wouldn't be necessary. Mr. Tucker? I just wanted to make one point of clarification is if it's a non or if it's a contiguous annexation where we're annexing the roadway, the, I do not believe the interlocal agreement would be required. There still might be one, but it wouldn't be, there wouldn't be any, certainly wouldn't be any requirement because it wouldn't be a non contiguous uh, annexation. Correct. Yep. Once the road is part of those 68 acres, you do not need an ILA. Right. And we don't have one now, and I don't foresee us having one ever. So my point is let's defer and wait until we have the roadway and the ILA is off the table. A second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Ms. Brown, please call the roll. Ms. Saverwater? No. Ms. Gales Harris? Aye. Mr. Maxwell? Aye. Vice Mayor Shacklett? Aye. Mr. Wright? Aye. Mayor McFarland? Aye. Mr. Huddleston, would you mind standing up? So everyone who heard all the kind things that Mr. Kendall said, that's Mr. Huddleston <laughs> right there. So congratulations, Sam. We'll make sure that City TV edits out and deletes all those kind words that were said, <laughs> so that way you don't get a big head. All right, we'll move to land use matters. Uh, amending the side or sign ordinance planning. Um, who, who has this? Teresa Stevens. Teresa. If you're running for office, you got to see her quite a bit if your signs weren't in the correct location. <laughs> Only you. Only me. Mr. Maxwell. <laughs> the rest of us behave. Never Jamie Averwater. <laughs> He had, a, he had a sign on every street. So. Mm -hmm. He just took advantage of our buyback program, no problem. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor and City Council. I'm Teresa Stevens, the sign administrator for the City of Murfreesboro. Set for public hearing tonight is a proposed sign ordinance amendment that will allow a certain type of sign located on a parcel or parcels having both mixed use zoning and having an approved plan sign overlay. The type of sign as defined by the sign ordinance is an electronic graphic display. This sign will display static images, graphics, or pictures with or without textual information. These images are most often displayed using LEDs or similar technology and can be controlled by a computer, placed on a timer, or remotely by an authorized user. Just as a refresher, the plan sign overlay district must meet specific criteria to be eligible and sign design books are reviewed by staff and then submitted to Planning Commission and City Council for appro approval. Plan sign overlays allow for new and innovative signs on large atypical developments and encourage design and development of signage that is of a higher quality than customary under the existing sign ordinance. This is in keeping with the approved plan sign overlay district's intent and purpose. With this amendment, City staff, Planning Commission, and City Council will have an opportunity to review and have oversight of the placement of these signs. And are there any questions in regard to the amendment? So moved. Second. Motion to second. Please call the roll. C City Council will need to conduct a public hearing. Oh, I'm sorry. Yep. <coughs> All right. So no motion, no second. We're going to need to hold a public hearing uh, to oh, look right. at this amendment to the sign ordinance. Uh, for our public hearings, and, and this also applies to the public hearing after this, if you will come to the podium, if you'll state your name and address, you'll have three minutes. Uh, speaking as an individual, you'll have five minutes if you're representing a, a group or a homeowners association. 
Um, and any questions that you ask, if you'll direct those to us, we'll get those answered at the end of the public hearing. All right, anyone wishing to speak for or against this sign ordinance amendment, please come to the podium. Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing and we'll consider on first reading ordinance 22047. Austin. So moved. Second. Motion is second. Please call the roll. Ms. Averwater. Aye. Ms. Skills Harris. Aye. Mr. Maxwell. Aye. Vice Mayor Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Wright. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. <laughs> All right, we're going to move to item eight, and this is rezoning property along Memorial Boulevard in Haynes Haven Lane. Mr. Blomley. Thank you, and good evening, Mayor McFarland and members of council. Like, let the record show that I have never picked up a candidate sign and confiscated it. <laughs> Unless they were in Alabama, right? <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Always got to make exceptions. Um, hope everybody's doing well tonight. Our um, zoning public hearing tonight is for the Adams Place PUD, which is located at the northwest corner of Memorial Boulevard in Haynes Haven Lane. Um, property was rezoned from I think, RM12 and CH to PUD, that's the northern portion of the property, a little over 16 acres. Um, it's in the area colored, shaded in, in blue um, back in 1995. And the portion of the Adams Place property that is colored in green on the map before you is zoned RS15. It has remained zoned RS15 um, for decades since uh, the Haynes Haven subdivision was uh, developed in the late 70s and 80s. So, so those the area in green was actually about like five lots that were platted in the in the Haynes Haven subdivision back in 1978, I believe. So, the request before you tonight is to amend the existing Adams Place PUD on that 16.6 acres, and then on the 5.4 acres along Haynes Haven Lane that's zoned. RS-15 would be to rezone um, that 5.4 acres to make it a part of the Adams Place PUD. As you know, PUD zoning is plan specific zoning. That's what I like to call it. It's specific to the plan that is submitted. And this particular plan has kind of gone through um, kind of an evolution since it first went to uh, the Planning Commission back in September. Um, the uh, Surrounding property directly uh, to the north of the subject property is uh, the Sprouts Shopping Center, zoned Commercial Highway. Directly to the west of the subject property is the Haynes Haven Subdivision, which is zoned RS-15. And it's also to the south of the subject property, zoned RS-15 as well. Across Memorial Boulevard is the, the Walmart, uh, which is zoned um, CH, Commercial Highway. Uh, as I mentioned, this was this property was first zoned PUD back in uh, 1995, and there was a subsequent amendment uh, several years later for the addition of a of a uh, administrative uh, offices building that was about 5,000 square feet. Uh, but no amendments have occurred on this property in about 20 years or so. Uh, the request before you tonight um, is for the uh, expansion of their uh, development with a total of 53 new dwelling units. And those 53 new dwelling units would be in the form of uh, 45 uh, dwelling units um, in, a, in, uh, in, a, in buildings that are uh, very near the corner of Memorial Boulevard and Haynes Haven Lane, and then eight additional units that would be fronting on Haynes Haven Lane. Uh, Planning Commission conducted a public hearing on this matter on September the 7th. Um, at which time it heard testimony from uh, a number of residents of <coughs> both of the Haynes Haven subdivision and the Adams Place uh, facility. And the Planning Commission deferred it at that time after <coughs> a number of concerns were expressed both by the, uh, the participants in the public hearing as well as the, the uh, Planning Commission members themselves. Uh, some of the changes that were subsequently made by the design team included uh, pushing the buildings further off of Haynes Haven Lane. Uh, I believe this, they were originally proposed to be set back 20 feet off Haynes Haven Lane, and now they're honoring the 40-foot front setback uh, that, is, that is in the RS-15 zoning district. So they're trying to keep the buildings in line with 
the existing houses along Haynes Haven Lane, so they pushed those back after some concerns were expressed at the Planning Commission public hearing. In addition, there were some changes made to the architecture after concerns by the Planning Commission <coughs> wanting to make the architecture more closely resemble that of the existing buildings on campus. Um, and there were some other miscellaneous changes made as well that um, I, won't, uh, I won't duplicate anything that, uh, that Mr. Roundtree and Mr. Pettit are gonna go over. Uh, they have a PowerPoint presentation prepared for you uh, Mr. Clyde Roundtree with Huddleston Steel Engineering and Mr. Keaton Pettit with Johnson and Bailey Architects to go over the plan. Um, Planning Commission um, took this item back up on December the 7th under old, old business after the uh, design team had made those changes and the Planning Commission at that meeting uh, voted to recommend its approval to City Council. A public hearing has been scheduled on this matter tonight. Um, and so we must conduct a public hearing and then the planning commission, or excuse me, the city council will need to have further discussion and, and staff will be available to answer any questions um, that you may have for us. Um, but Clyde Roundtree and Keaton Pettit um, would like to make a presentation for you on the proposed expansion of this development. Good evening, Mayor, Council Members. My name is Clyde Roundtree with Huddleston Steel Engineering. Thank you for the opportunity to stand before you to present to you some of the changes that we're uh, anticipating at Adams Place and the overall development. As Matthew mentioned, I'm uh, part of the design team with Keaton Pettit from Johnson Bailey Architects. I'll be walking through the site plan components and the various aspects of uh, what we've proposed and those aspects that have changed since we've had several meetings. We've also had multiple neighborhood meetings. They've had multiple internal meetings and all those have shaped this end product that you're seeing tonight. Keaton will be talking to you about the architectural changes that we've experienced as well. So with that in mind, this, this first slide just to show you is a rendering of how Adams Place, the townhomes components would look from Haynes Haven Lane, looking onto the campus. Matthew mentioned the adjacent zone. Now I wanna focus on the site plan. So if we can look at the site plan, the, the buildings that are red or pink in this, in this image, those are the three-story buildings that will house 45 new units that'll be up against Memorial Drive and Haynes Haven Lane. There'll be somewhat of an apartment style type of architecture. Again, three stories. Uh, the grades from Haynes Haven Lane drop down. The grades from Memorial drop down. So they'll be in a little bit of a recessed area. That area currently is a pasture land, just open area on the campus, just a green space. So as we decided to put the, those units in that location, our primary concerns were respecting the trees along the main entrance drive coming into the campus, the historical entrance of the, of the campus, respecting the existing buffers that are along Memorial. There's existing trees there, pretty dense right now, even in the winter, there's pretty basically a lot of evergreens in that composite and that berm. And then doing our best to respect the berm that goes along Haynes Haven Lane up to that secondary entrance, which is right there on the right when you come down Haynes Haven Lane. Once you get past that entrance, the berm changes and we decided to go with more of a residential style architectural look, so it's more fitting with the neighborhood. So the townhomes that are proposed, which are orange, we decided to make the landscaping look more fitting to what you expect inside of a neighborhood. So that's kind of what happened along the perimeter. As we move through the process, those orange townhome buildings, Keaton will walk into that, but originally we had those oriented towards basically more internal to the campus. And when you went down Haynes Haven Lane, you would have been looking at the side of those buildings. We had some feedback from the staff saying those would need to look more like fronts. We were able in the process to reorient those buildings totally. So now the front of the townhome units face Haynes Haven Lane, which we felt was more consistent with the character of the Haynes Haven neighborhood. There's driveways in the back, so those will be accessed from the back. That's how they'll be loaded, how the residents will use those, those homes. So the two things we're introducing, the pink and the red color are basically three-story, 45-unit buildings, and then the orange are basically eight townhome type of um, units. We're also, there's a yellow component, which is basically on the top left corner of the drawing. That's a new amenity building. The leadership at, um, Adams Place 
believe that adding an additional amenity would be important. The target audience for these new units are basically active living community type of folks. So there's an opportunity for uh, the amenity center to be another avenue for them to en enjoy the community, but also to participate on campus and to have another outlet for activity. But that will be shared by the whole campus. That yellow building will be more of an open air structure. Keaton will get into all the details. But we're, we're leveraging, there's an existing green space that that's sitting in right now that much like the green space that's currently out there is not being utilized, there's another green space that's kind of underutilized. So we'd be able to bring some, some value to that space in terms of activity for the whole community to utilize. If you notice, there's walkways going around the whole campus, the new campus. We're trying to create the opportunity for more opportunity for basically exercise around the community internally not having to get on Haynes Haven Lane, making sure that it's all internal, but providing more amenities, more walking opportunities, more out outdoor space to be involved with. And in the middle of the, the red buildings, there's a green space there. That's a dog park, dog walking area, as well as their mail kiosk. So there'll be a separate mail kiosk associated with that, with the new units as well. What we've done, originally we had asked for a reduction in the front setback, just to allow for more room in that central green space where the dog park is. After uh, having a lot of opposition from that setback being reduced, we were able to go back to the 40-foot setback, move the buildings back off of Haynes Haven Lane, be more consistent with the character of the neighborhood, and we, were, we just had to reduce that internal green space a little bit. So that was an easy concession to make. The other thing that came up that was super important was maintaining the, the buffer, the existing buffer, as much as possible. So with that in mind, especially around the secondary access point, which is coming off of Haynes Haven Lane, there's some existing magnolia trees that we thought were very important to keep those intact. All the uh, buffer going from Haynes Haven Lane to Memorial will be intact, like I mentioned, along Memorial, but as well as along Haynes Haven Lane. So we wanted to make sure that was addressed and those trees were preserved to kind of protect the neighbors on Haynes Haven Lane from any sort of objectionable views, but also to kind of keep that character at the corner that's existing there now. Beyond that point, it's all been just kind of massaging the plans to try to meet the expectations of the orientation of the building, to try to do our best to minimize the impact on Haynes Haven Lane, and also just to try to scale down the apartment building style, you know, on the red buildings to make sure that the buffer is maintained. So those are the overall arcing components of the site plan. Um, any questions you may have related to the site plan, I'd be more than willing to answer those. Uh, Keaton, if you want to come up and talk about the architecture, that'd be fantastic. I hope. Adeline, yes, ma'am. Oh, I have a sure. couple of questions. Um, I'm sure I'm just not understanding this. So when you turn off a memorial onto Haynes, where those the berms and the trees are now, they are not going to be touched. They won't be touched up until you get to the, where that secondary entry is, Madeline. There's a there's a driveway that goes in off of Haynes Haven Lane. All that berm stays intact and all the landscaping around that entrance. There's some real mature magnolias around the entrance. Once you get beyond that entrance, that berm is, there's some dead trees inside that berm. It's not nearly as well as established on the, as it is on the, uh, the eastern side of that gate. So we are proposing to make that look more residential, refurbish that, bring in more street trees, more landscaping, but we're doing away with the existing berm as it stands because it's not in really good shape. And the orange that you referred to, those orange buildings, they're going to look more like houses on Haynes Haven to match the houses in that subdivision. They As are. On they, Memorial, it's going to be more like um, high rise, not high rise, but three story, like apartment, townhouse. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yeah, so the, the, the red buildings are three stories tall. The orange buildings are townhomes. They're mass like a single family residence. If you look at Keaton, we'll get into that because it shows it pretty well. We work with the staff to make sure that the massing was appropriate, that it looked appropriate for the neighborhood. And we've even moved them. We've, we've had three generations where we moved them, where the you know, two story, one story units. At one point, we had a two story unit up against the western property line. We got feedback from the staff saying if we could move that to make it one story, because there's a one story house next to it. So we moved that unit to a one story. Then we move the two stories over and we've mixed them. So now it goes two story, one story, two story, one story as you progress down Haynes Haven Lane. But the goal was to create more of a residential character that would be more compatible with the neighborhood. Thank you.
What is the distance between the family, those family units, those four units, fam multifamily units? What is the distance between them? Offhand, I would say probably 10 feet, 8 to 10 feet. Okay. Good evening, council members and uh, Mayor McFarland. Uh, as Mr. Blomley uh, mentioned, I'm uh, Keaton Pettit with Johnson and Bailey Architects. I've been the lead architect on this project. Um, we actually started uh, our design process uh, over a year ago, and uh, we've been through countless design concepts and iterations, and uh, I think we're really proud of where we've come to at this, this time. Um, we've been very thoughtful about every aspect of the design and uh, how it affects not only existing residents, but also the surrounding neighbors, and as well as the character of the campus and but we also wanted to, to keep with the vision for this project. And um, that vision is to really provide an extension of high quality senior living offered by Adams Place currently, and just opening the campus up to even, even broader spectrum of seniors that might wanna take part in the Adams Place campus, but are not ready to, to, to move into a, an independent living situation where dining and meals and housekeeping is provided. So this concept is a more independent, active, senior living project and um, and we feel that our architecture uh, architectural design kind of reflects this vision of an extension of the Adams Place campus uh, by our con by continuing the use of the same palette of materials and architectural features that are found on the campus uh, and the overall site layout um, was was conceived to to take advantage of and not displace uh, the mature trees that are found on the Adams Place campus that are so beautiful and, and really the, the, the major attraction of the campus. Um, the three-story apartment style buildings uh, each uh, house 15 living units. Uh, these living units are retreat style living units with ample windows which showcase the mature landscaping at Adams Place and, and provide direct views to the outdoors from the moment you enter each unit. Um, all the units have patios or balconies and, and two thirds of those are, are arranged so that they're, they're basically ne nested in the, in the mature growth of the, the existing trees on campus. So we, we really tried to take advantage of the beautiful uh, scenery there at Adams Place. The townhome style units which really aren't townhomes. Um, they, they've been uh, designed to blend seamlessly with the existing uh, Haynes Haven neighborhood. Uh, we've, we've redesigned them to have an appearance of more of a single family residence. Um, it's a combination of one and two story uh, attached homes. So there's four total, four total structures with eight living units. Um, each unit includes a generous front porch and a small patio garden uh, to encourage a sense of community. And the highlight uh, of this, this project to me is the, the, the amenity center, which was conceptualized as a bridge between the existing independent living and the new senior living communities. Uh, we think it's gonna be a true asset to both and that will, it will have an immediate impact um, that will be positive. <laughs> for both the existing residents of Adams Place and the proposed new residents of the new senior active living development. Um, this building was designed to uh, seamlessly blend the indoor and outdoor spaces. It's, it's arranged around a, an ample outdoor living uh, area with a proposed fire pit and grill and other activities. Uh, it, the building itself provides a variety of activities for the campus such as fitness classes, arts and crafts activities, and community events. The center, the amenity center features flexible spaces with large floor to ceiling windows which allow natural light to flood the space and provide an inviting atmosphere for residents to come together and socialize. And the, the glass overhead doors uh, can be opened for special occasions to connect the interior gathering spaces with the outdoor living spaces. Our overall design for this project uh, follows the Murfreesboro design guidelines and we feel it conforms to the classic Georgian architectural language that's found on the existing buildings on the campus. 
Uh, we've used a consistent use of brick, arches, stone banding, roofing materials, and the uh, signature stone coins, which they don't show up well on this, uh, on this screen here, but um, those stone elements are the, the beautiful stone coins that are seen on the entry gate to Adam's Place now. So we really tried to pick up on a lot of the architectural character, but also provide a, a distinct look to this uh, a brand of weaving at uh, Adam's Place. And I'm happy to answer any questions specific to the architecture. Any questions? All right, thank you. All right, we'll need to hold the public hearing for this uh, rezoning request. Mr. Roundtree, do you have some? Mayor, if, if the council would, would be interested, the leadership group of Adams Place is here. If there's any sort of questions you may have for them, they had a presentation prepared. We can do it after the public hearing, whatever you find most appropriate, but they, they'll give you an insider perspective of what they've been working on that's really relevant. Uh, a, lot of the, a lot of the things we've been working on, they've been working on is working with the internal residents and making sure that there's any way to meet those needs um, they would have something to say about that and help you, but we can do it at whatever time you want to do it. Council, do y'all want to have the public hearing? You want to hear? I'd What's rather have the public hearing myself. I agree. Okay, thank you. All right, All right let's have the public hearing. Anyone uh, wishing to speak for or against this uh, rezoning request? We'll ask you to put, come to the uh, come to the podium. My name is June McCash and I live at Adams Place. Um, here as a resident to speak against the proposed rezoning of the lots in question. When NHC first presented its proposal in 1994, they wanted to zone everything PUD, including the five lots in question, though at the time no construction was planned on the lots. That request was denied by the City Council. At present, at present, NHC is proposing to build three apartment buildings, eight townhouses or four duplexes, and a clubhouse taking away most of the remaining green space not originally intended to be used for construction. Instead, the original plan included two additional wings on the independent living component. You have the, in front of you there, you have that plan from 1994. Most current residents have no objection to that original plan. However, it has now changed dramatically. My concerns are this. In 1994, opponents pointed out that lots one through five of Haynes Haven subdivision were subject to a restrictive covenant recorded in book 269, page 443, allowing only single family dwellings in the Haynes Haven subdivision. As a consequence, the City Council decided that the lots in question should remain RS-15. They approved the rest of the project as PUD with the understanding that it would be a continuing care retirement community. My second concern is that these new buildings are not in keeping with NHC's stated mission. I quote from the minutes of the 1994 meeting in which they described their intent to build a plan unit development known to the Internal Revenue Code as a continuing care retirement community, which is a specific provision recognizing and encouraging the development of property for elderly citizens 65 of age or older to have available within a limited geographical area total security for their residential and, if necessary, health care needs, unquote. The proposed new construction is intended for people 55 years or older who are not retired and who have no need for continuing care. The proposed new apartment buildings and clubhouse will diminish the security, the privacy, the green space, and the tranquility of current residents. It will increase traffic, noise, and density and force us to live for two years in a construction zone. I respectfully urge city council members to follow the precedent set by the 1994 city council and deny these zoning changes. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. McCash.
Good evening. I'm Faye Johnson. My husband Gary and I resided at Boone's Place Independent Living, 1925 Memorial Boulevard, apartment 220. We object to this rezoning as proposed. The official 1994 planned unit development under which Adam Place properties are currently zoned specifically states that NHC requested and was granted PUD status for a proposed development known to the Internal Revenue Code as a continuing care retirement community. This is a special division recognizing and encouraging the development of property of, for elderly citizens 65 years of age and older to have available within a limited geographic area total security for their residential and, if necessary, health care needs. Vice Pre Mayor Reeves at that time recapped discussions that everyone was in agreement to pursue the recommended development as opposed to a commercial highway development and apartment buildings. The proposed development consisted of four phases which included nursing home beds, assisted living units, and independent living units. Adams Place is currently such a continuing care retirement community, one noted as a model both locally and across the country. Fast forward to this evening where you are being asked to amend the Adams Place PUD to include but not be limited to allowing the development of 53 additional multifamily dwelling units and a new amenity center building. Therein lies major issues. The proposed new units are intended, according to NHC representatives, to target 55 or older employed, not retired, persons with active lifestyles. Thus, those units become apartments in an ordinary apartment complex as a designated designation continuing care uh, retirement community. They are not additional independent living or assisted living units for retired persons. This altered designation has very real and direct living and lifestyle consequences for current residents. Consider just the implications of increased traffic alone created by active lifestyle residents and their families. Seven to, to 100 more cars and more traffic generated on the property. Increased traffic presents real challenges, including safety challenges, to current residents, the average age of which is 86, and many of whom are health compromised when they are walking or driving. Congested traffic flow entering and exiting the property will also be significantly heightened. Another very serious concern is the increased potential for flooding. The Adams Place PUD actually sits at an island bold, which makes it highly susceptible to water drainage issues. Flooding has occurred in the past. Given increased water runoff due to significantly reduced green space on the property, coupled with the unusual weather patterns and isolated water disasters that are occurring, the potential for additional Ms. flooding Johnson. and water damage issues poses real and genuine concerns. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Thank you so much. That's three minutes. Thank you very much. I, you know I'm a teacher. I know. <laughs> Ms. 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 Thank you very yes. much. <laughs> Ms. Johnson, if I remember, you were at MTSU the same time I was at MTSU, correct? Yes, and I taught you well. Yeah, thank you, Ms. Johnson. <laughs> Hello, I'm Janine Scripp, and I live at 1925 Memorial Boulevard, apartment 106, which is in the, um, right in the midst of all the building. When I moved to Adams Place, in March of 2019, I was the youngest one there at 67. And everyone said, why in the world are you here? Uh, the majority of the people were uh, late 70s and 80s and 90s. And I said, well, I have had several traumatic years in my past, and I was able to live um, at a quiet, established um, place like Adams Place. I had looked at Adams Place 10 years prior to, and it was exactly what I needed. Um, excuse me. There were several things, several different um, buildings being built, excuse me, in Franklin and in Murfreesboro, and I looked at all of them. 
and I did not want to live in a construction zone. Everything was um, being added to or um, in the midst of it. They were still renting, but they were construction all over. And my psychic just could not stand the construction. Um, I lived at um, the um, teacher's um, retirement in Green Hills, and my window was just right next to where they moved uh, dealers from this space to this space. So I have that horrible feeling, and it just um, really um, upsets me to think that I'm going. It's going to be right in my backyard. Um, thank you. Thank you, Miss Grant. <laughs> My name is Dennis Martens. I live at Adams Place, 1925 Memorial Boulevard, Independent Living, Apartment 301. My wife and I came to Adams Place in April 2008. <clears throat> we were there for the big flood. Water got into our building, took out our electricity. No elevators, no lights. The emergency lights did come on. Fortunately, my wife had Parkinson's disease, so I had to get her and her walker down three flights of stairs. We ended up checking in the Hampton Inns we ended up staying in a motel for an entire week. After a couple of days, I heard that a jury rigged an elevator that was working, so we went back to get clean clothes and water our flowers. So while we were there, two ladies came in and cleaned out of our refrigerator, throwing everything away, including three pounds of Oscar Mayer bacon. <laughs> that hurt. <laughs> so, now we have, that was the big flood. Now we have uh, NHC when he put buildings on our green space, a couple of acres of asphalt on our green space. This green space soaks up rain, lots of rain, and torrential rains at time. And where is it going to go? And most likely we'll have flood number two. It's a drainage problem and it's very serious and I'm going to leave this with a question for the city council. If you allow this construction, where is the water going to go? Thank you, Mr. Martin. Good evening. My name is Irene Filicione. I lived at Adams Place for over a year. I moved to Adams Place for several reasons, but one of the major reasons was the serene ambiance created by the green space and beautiful trees. It was a rude awakening when I heard a few months later of the currently proposed expansion that would take over this lovely campus. By then, I also realized how essential every inch of this green space was to our physical well-being because it shields us from the noise and air pollution generated by the traffic on Memorial Boulevard and Walmart across the street. So this goes beyond aesthetics. In 1994, almost 30 years ago, the city council turned down the request to rezone the lots along Keynes Haven. Today, when the population of Murfreesboro has quadrupled and Memorial Boulevard has become a major artery, there are even more reasons not to rezone these lots. The residents are against the, an expansion of this scale. When first presented, 75% of the uh, people signed the petition against it. A few weeks ago at a second meeting, the request was made that all who do not favor this project stand up and only about five remained seated. Why are we not in favor? Because it will affect the quality of our life, some more than others, depending on which side of the building you live on, but all of us will be negatively affected. Adding three apartment buildings, townhouses and a clubhouse, would take up all but a few patches of green space. Furthermore, Adams Place will no longer be a retirement community. The addition of people over 35 
basically the age of our children, will turn a peaceful environment into one that is hectic and overcrowded. Adding 75 to 100 new working people with busy lives will guarantee lots of traffic, will add to the noise um, that already exists and the air pollution, and well as congestion on top of the stress situation that exists living on Memorial Boulevard. The clubhouse will also negatively affect the natural light, reaching the apartments nearby, the traffic generated by this new younger population to and from the clubhouse during the day into the evening and most definitely on weekends. Um, uh, living uh, uh, you know, quietly will be a thing of the past. There are additional problems with plant changes to the therapy pool but our proposal to relocate the clubhouse in or on top one of the apartment buildings, if there must be an apartment building, received no response. If an expansion is needed, why not go back to the phase four version presented in 1994 for retired people over 65? Ms. Filiponia, thank you. Thank you. My name is Mary Edith Martin McFarland. I was born and reared in Murfreesboro. Larry and I raised our three children here. Hunter, the oldest, is raising his four children, and then the next generation has come back from college and has decided to live in the borough too. I live at Adams Place, one, apartment 119. My concern is we're told that we're going to cut down 20% of the trees that we breathe from. Each of those trees puts off oxygen that helps us have a better air control. The second thing I want to ask for, for you to vote against is the pool is a very healthy therapeutic pool for me. I have Parkinson's and it helps me a great deal. There is a proposed to remove these beautiful arched windows and put in garage doors. Uh, that will, the pool is 86 degrees. It will open more chance for cold air to come in, making it harder for that pool to be the right temperature. Plus bugs worms, snakes, frogs, birds, sna uh, snails, and squirrels even will join us. We don't need that. It's a therapeutic pool for us. And the third thing is the greenery. Oh, no, it's the people, I, you know, I won't be concerned, but my friends that live facing the west, they look out at greenery and beautiful trees and can watch the sunset. Can you imagine what's coming? Brick walls. We just want quality living at Adams Place. Please vote against this proposal. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. McFarland. I'm Charlotte Gardner. I too live at Adams Place Independent Living. I'm 86 years old, which I understand is the average age of independent living residents. When Dr. and Mrs. Carl Adams started NHC, Mrs. Adams was quoted as saying, we mortgaged everything but our souls to start this company. The first nursing home was built on, on University Street. The business grew from only nursing homes to continuing care retirement communities, CCRC and has kept to that purpose. The proposed development, however, 
goes in a completely different direction. Not only does it not offer any care, it is not even for retirees. As been said before, Adams Place independent living waiting list averages 30 to 35 people. And CCRC are more needed <laughs> than any 55 and over apartment buildings. In 1994, two wings or two independent living buildings were approved, but were never built. The north wing space was used to build a utility building. That building was needed, and from the look of things that are left outside the building now, it needs to be enlarged. The south wing is still possible. That wing would keep with the waiting list keep up with the waiting list, baby. And the aging population is growing faster today. Older people choose to live at Adams Place because of the quality of life, just as it is. That includes green space. I ask council to deny the rezoning, ask NHC to add the wing, Keep the same life quality by maintaining the current building's will and keeping or in remaining green space so that the facility stays with the rating of five of five, making it one of the best CCRC in Tennessee. Thank you. Next. My name is Bill Dickford, and we, <clears throat> our family moved here in 1965-64. We watched this town grow. All of our kids went to school and, and had their educations here. One thing that I heard tonight, <clears throat> One thing I heard tonight is something that you guys have got to really look at. Number one, your time is coming. Your time. <clears throat> and you could be sitting in a seat just like this. And put it in your minds what is good for us, not them. And that's all I've got to say. Thank you, Mr. Pepper. Good evening, my name is Hamel Trilocchione. I'm Irene's husband. Can you say that one more time? Pardon me? Uh, Mr. Philip? Trilocchione. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I live obviously at uh, 1925 uh, Murfreesboro uh, Memorial Boulevard. Uh, she mentioned uh, the uh, version of 1994 and uh, this option uh, was uh, stipulated for a presentation by the Planning Commission, which never took place. And also, the use of an indefinite deferral, uh, in my opinion, gave the applicant unfair, unfair advantage by preventing a follow-up. Abandoning uh, Adams Place's retirement community and adding an expansion on the scale proposed will not make a dent in Murfreesboro's need for an active adult community for over 55, but will be just enough to ruin the Adams Place campus for the residents and in independent living. We came here a, year, a little bit over a year ago from Virginia and looked around Charlottesville area uh, for retirement, but for other reasons, we decided to move to uh, Murfreesboro, and a major contribution was Adams Place, its serenity, its environment, the green space that is always referred to as unused. It isn't unused, 
it is very much used by its citizens, by its residents, as a like a, a park in a city. You you pay for parks in a city. Uh, why? Not just for playgrounds and, and having dogs or, or walk, which can happen here, uh, but just uh, to have a quiet, relaxing environment, and uh, in our case for the residents, for the rest of our lives. It's not that we are moving, uh, we are staying here and would like to live the, uh, in peace and quiet and uh, preserve that uh, environment. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Larry Castelli, and uh, my wife and I moved to Murfreesboro in 1970. Murfreesboro certainly has changed since 1970, when a Memorial Boulevard was Lebanon Pike, and Miss Love Haynes lived where Adams Place is now located. We watched Adams Place develop. We spent quite a bit of time there because my wife's mother was at long-term care for over eight years. Uh, many days, almost every day when it was pretty, I took her strolling in her wheelchair. And the, the beauty of the campus was something my wife and I decided that when we, time was ready for us to move to a retirement, and that's the key word, retirement community, that Adams Place would be the place we'd want to go. Because, <clears throat> as Dr. Adams said, it was an ongoing retirement community. Independent living, uh, assisted living, and long-term living, there is a um, handicap uh, uh, area that uh, you can, for people who need to have handicap situations taken care of. Long, um, we have a area for people who are having trouble in memory care. But these are points. Now, the one thing when we mo moved here in night, when we moved to Adams Place. In 2020, April of 2020, nothing was ever said that this that they were fixing to build apartment buildings. We knew because we were living in this town, and everybody knew everybody had business back in 1995. We knew what was going on with the city council at that time about the approval, and uh, I just want I gave out a brochure that is still in the lobby of Adams Place. And um, I want to address the first paragraph, and this is, um, uh, Adams Place is, um, firm, uh, I can't read that word, my glasses are not good, okay. <laughs> Affiliated, there we go, with National, let me get it out far enough, with National Healthcare Corporation. And is the first and most experienced uh, retirement care, and the key word is retirement care community in Rutherford County, offering residential assisted living, memory care, nursing, health center, and rehab. That's what we signed up for. We didn't sign up for apartment buildings for people who were still working. We signed up for retirement. You've heard all this from other people. Mr. Castelli. You thank, got it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Castelli. Thank you all for being so respectful for me having to be the timer up here. So not everybody is like that, I'll tell y'all. My name is Margaret Ordabadian. I live in independent living at Adams Place, 1925 Memorial Boulevard, apartment 123. Uh, we first, uh, my family moved to Murfreesboro in 1962. We raised our children here. We've had a, 
long association with everything that has come and gone in the university and in Murfreesboro. My husband and I decided to move to Adams Place in 2015. His health was not good, but we were able to continue living there until he died in 2017, and I have continued to live in the same apartment since then. Living at Adams Place has been a very rewarding experience for me, but the thought of how it will change with this proposed expansion is very disturbing. The concern I have is the the concern I have is the loss of green space and the increased population density in this small area. I believe this will be detrimental not just to the current residents, but also to our neighbors in Haynes Haven and to those who come after us. That is one of the things I wish you could think of. Think of the future and how important green space is. It's not just something that ought to be utilized. Every blade of grass is giving us a it's cleaning our air so that we have cleaner air to breathe. And believe me, with Memorial Boulevard and the traffic on that street, we are in danger of losing the air we breathe if we don't keep as much green space as possible. Every square foot of green space helps to offset the pollution caused by the heavy traffic on Memorial Boulevard in the Walmart parking lot and in the Sprouts Shopping Center next door. As a city, we should do everything we can to protect the air quality in heavily traveled areas. We know that green space lost to asphalt and concrete is lost forever. Once that asphalt goes down, you're never going to have grass again growing in that space. While many of us will not live to suffer the consequences of your decision tonight, we are also thinking of the future and those who will follow us in this community. Not just our small community at Adams Place, but the larger community of Haynes Haven and even the larger community of the city of Murfreesboro. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ordebodian. Hello. I hope I got that right. That was good. My name is Lenita Bowman, and I live at 123 Love Court. Um, in the Haynes Haven subdivision. Um, we moved there in the fall of 2000, so I've been there for a little over 20 years. And of course, like everybody has said, the traffic on Memorial has become interesting to say the least. <laughs> we, um, I don't typically turn left unless I have to out of Love Court. It dumps out into Memorial. I work as a teacher at uh, Middle Tennessee Christian School. You have two school zones that are very close so that doesn't help. My street in particular is not connected, but I already have increased traffic. We have a lot of cut through from James that go from Northfield over to Memorial to cut. So we deal with that already. And I can just imagine that that might get even worse. As far as I appreciate the changes that they've made to make it more aesthetic. Um, my concern is how close those lots are. I think they said 10 feet to the next house. Did I hear that incorrectly? Um, that's concerning because most of our lots, I mean, mine is a little over a half acre. And I think probably most of them are about that. I'm not <laughs> sure. But the increased traffic and the aesthetics, and I, I just think that loses, you're putting four units next to individual houses. And those lot lines are not gonna be very big. So um, I would appreciate it if you would deny. Thank you.
my name is Pauline Hardiman, and I live on Freedom Court, which is an extension of James Drive, which runs behind Adams Place. Um, I can't imagine that this is not gonna, going to um, have an effect on the property values of the single family homes in that area as well because of the increased traffic. When you get people, I am retired, okay? I'm 71, but the people that are 55 and older in an area like Adams Place makes no sense at all. They, they are going to be so busy and they're gonna be working people. And these folks that live at Adams Place, this is their last years. Would you, would you want, would you want your parents to have to deal with this? If you had a mother or father, would you want them to deal with this? Do you think that would be fair in their last years? Please deny this for all the people at Adams Place and for the people that own the single family homes in Haynes Haven. Thank you. Good evening, Shane McFarland and city council members. My name is Mark Wood. I live at 107 Haynes Haven Lane. And before I start my presentation, uh, the pictures that were put up there, the red th three-story structure on Haynes Haven needs to be brought back down to an orange structure. It doesn't need to be any more than two stories, but that's not saying I want this approved. During the September 7th planning meeting, Jamie Haverwater asked Margaret Green a question. Did the 1994 PUD agreement promise in writing these lots won't be rezoned? Margaret Green said yes. And the 1994 PUD agreement had six written stipulations. The first two were five lots remained residential, and number two was lots three used for entrance, exit, gated, carded, residence only. Andy Clark was asked about the gate. He said, it was brought to my attention the 1994 PUD agreement stated the gate was to be carded. Technology has improved, so we should be able to fix that. My point is, if Andy Clark can pick from the six stipulations and cherry pick which one he wants, that I would like to be able to cherry pick which, pick which one I want, and I want stipulation number four. The landscaping buffering shown on the preliminary diagram will be on the RS-15 lots, basically as shown and approved by the Planning Department and Planning Department Commission. In 1994, there were, we were told that the Adams Place has a mandate to keep all their runoff water on site. Now, while they were trying to do this, one maintenance room flooded. Charlotte Gardner spoke at the last meeting and said they'd had several rooms to flood. Please do not rezone and make things worse. Sean Wright, the biggest concern you had on September 7th, the large number of Adams Place residents against this. But really, nothing has changed. It's still that way. Uh, Adams Place seems to want what belongs to them, but it also seems that they want what has been promised to the Haynes Haven residents. Now, each of you should have this in front of you because last time there were questions as to where the phase four from 1994 was supposed to be located. I have some pictures. Behind Adams Place, there's a ditch, and these pit rocks run for 130 feet in that ditch. And you can see debris where water has been over these. There's more boulders. And the residents along there say the water just spews out. This is a pitch. Here's the Adams Place from the rear. Here's their fence from the rear. Here's the bottom of the fence. It's four feet from here down to the bottom of the ditch. Right here is a picture taken after two hours of rain. This is their fence from inside the gate. This is the bottom of the fence. It's four feet from uh, this to the outside. Right here, it's uh, three inches from here where the water level is, about four feet across here. You can see this leaf debris flowing under the fence after two hours of rain. But we were told they had a mandate to keep all their water on site, so I'm a little bit puzzled by that. Right here is outside of the gate. The water's about 12 feet across. The water is coming out so fast that it's springing up, uh, water capping 18 inches. So my point is, they were given a mandate to keep all their water on site. I don't know if it's a state mandate, a city mandate, a federal mandate, I don't understand those things. But their water is leaving, and if that much is leaving, uh, 
when a two hour shower occurs, then I wonder how many tens of thousands of gallons have left that property over the 28 years it's been in place when the water got above those boulders. 130 feet of diesel truck engine sized boulders. I thank you for allowing me to speak and I thank you for your service. Thank you, Mr. Woods. Hello, I'm Gail Hendricks. I live at 103 Haynes Haven Lane. And I'm not going to repeat what so many have uh, about my objections. Of course, there's the traffic problem that we're concerned about. But um, I live at the very first house in at the entrance of Haynes Haven. And what my house will be looking at, my front view will be those three-story apartments. The I, I understand that they've made some changes, but that berm is being reduced, not, um, and what I have now, I can look at, at green space, as they've been describing. But the berm will be reduced. The trees, there's no way with all that construction that all those mature trees can be preserved. Um, I just believe there'll be too much damage, and even the current weather has done some damage to some of those trees, obviously. And two, this is being proposed as a 55-plus community, which will change the dynamics of the area, like I said, with, with traffic and impact our community. And we have a lovely community that has no HOA, thank the Lord. And we want to, <laughs> well, we want to keep it that way. And uh, I also want to uh, say one other thing. In talking with some of our neighbors, a major concern is how many apartments are popping up all over the city. And that just especially is uh, possibly right in our faces. And, and I wanted to express my concern. Thank you. Well, you got to wait in line. This is a big crowd. So um, I'm Cynthia Allen. Um, I live at 206 Peacock Avenue. I know everybody on the board uh, or on the um, on the on the council, but um, I want to say first of all, I'm in public education. I am very encouraged by the turnout. I hope you guys are as well. Um, but I think to sum up why everybody's upset is we had ordinances in place and we had plans in place and we're going against those that were already had already gone and been brought forward. And I think what everybody is trying to say is, you know, we want public input and we ask for public input and it's in your design manual and it's in our, it's in everything that we do. It's in our tree management and half of what we've talked about here is in opposition to what's in your own design manual. It's in opposition to what's in the tree ordinance. And so I think what people are saying is, can we honor what was already approved for one, or at least go back and revisit to try and, and see how that can be, you know, re-looked at in a way that really does try and meet the middle. Um, Stormwater is a very big concern. We've raised this uh, each time this has come up. That is not a normal, I don't, I work in stormwater. I have never seen in this city a design like is in the back of Adams Place. And I wish we could hold these up again. That's a serious safety hazard. We raised this before the 2010 flood. Um, that has to be, when you're down in the basin of that, that has to be at least 14 feet high. So. There's a house on the corner that had to put a fence in because it came halfway up their property. That backtracks onto homeowners that live in the area. Um, it doesn't make it to the regional detention. There's a gradient that has to go up. The rocks and the boulders there, I would almost bet dollar to dollar that that's a collapsed cave system. So it never made sense why that drain there or why our regional detention went that way. I could be wrong, I'm not a geologist, but uh, there's enough features back there that kind of show this. We asked for the landscape architects when they built Sprout to help address this. Um, there is a lot of water that comes off that way. It does not detain or retain any amount of stormwater. It is designed to go outside. So um, we raised this at the meetings to ask what's being done, you know, specifically about the stormwater. Um, and we still haven't had an answer. I don't know what calculations have happened um, or if that's even looked at at this stage we asked that they told us that that doesn't need to be looked at 
but I think that should seriously be considered because it is already impacting at least four to five homes and two additional lots that aren't built yet. Um, so that was in the 94 agreement um, that hadn't never been addressed as of 94. It's still not being addressed today, so we want to bring that up. Um, we have policies Ms. Allen. with our ordinances. I know to try and preserve trees, these are really mature trees. We just ask that you, you know, protect that berm that was supposed to be in place and the trees that bring the benefit. Thank and you, Ms. Allen. backyard when it rains and I'm not even that close to Adam's place. We've got water issues now. <laughs> <coughs> What's your name and address please? Yes, my name is Valerie Martin and I live at 207 Peacock Avenue. And thank <coughs> you for listening to all our concerns and we've got plenty. When making important decisions, I make a chart of my pros and my cons and then try to make an informed decision. My pros are you're going to provide more senior citizen living and the owners make money and the city may collect more taxes based on improvements made. My cons are a lot of seniors can't afford the Adams, price, the Adams Place price. They need more Westbrook Towers, which I'm hoping you guys will consider at some point. Traffic congestion with the Northfield School, a lot of parents bring their kids and pick them up. They don't ride buses. So that's going to add to all of that. The cost of more infrastructure to provide services for these extra people there. Uh, the landscape and the existing residents feel like they're sardines in a can. Uh, the water and drainage issues I'm passing around my backyard when it rains really hard and all of my neighbors have the same problem. And noise. It's, it's a lot of fun to wake up at 3 in the morning to the sound of dumpsters hitting concrete. <laughs> and rental property, the, the occupants are usually pretty transient and, and that's going to make a change for the subdivision too. <clears throat> As you can see, there are more cons than pros. A promise was made in 1994 that zoning would remain RS-15. A lot of us bought our property and made improvements based on that prop promise and was relying on the promise. Yes, it is Adam's place, Adam's property, but it's not that they can do whatever they want to with it. That's why we have zoning, and that's why I want you to reconsider uh, leaving this the RS-15. They've been a good neighbor, and that's why when they asked to build a memory care center, we didn't oppose it. Because, I mean, they're not going to be driving, so there's no, not much traffic impact. And it's in the middle of the campus, so we don't ever see it. Um, the city council exists to make informed decisions that are best for its citizens and the city as a whole. I fear this addition will be a fiasco for all of us. Please make the best decision for all. Thank you. And as an afterthought, my husband was a planning director for the city, for the state of Murfreesboro, I mean state of Tennessee, sorry. And he would come home and complain about we've made too much of a good thing. There's too much development and it's going to not be a place fit to live in. Thank you. My name's Denise Mann. I live at 323 Haynes Haven Lane. My husband and I moved uh, to Tennessee in 2003, and we absolutely adore it. I love our neighborhood. Coming home from work, I hit Haynes Haven Lane from, I'll be nice, Memorial Boulevard. That's not what I want to call it. And when I hit Haynes Haven Lane, that's home. I've got a line of trees to the right that's beautiful. It's nice. It's quiet. And that's just me driving down. That's not me living behind that. That's their everyday life at Adams Place. They get to see that. They get to feel that all the time. And to take that and make it apartments and townhomes, 
to me it's like a bait and switch for some of y'all from what I just heard last year. I mean, that's, that's not right. That's not fair to them. It's selfish for me to say don't take that beauty for my drive home when I hit my home, which is right there when I turn left onto that street. That's home. And I'm going to miss it if it happens. I'm hoping it doesn't. But from what y'all say, I can now live on the new places because I'm 57. So I guess I could move in at some point. I don't think I should be able to do that because I am still working. <clears throat> I have a different lifestyle than the people that live there. I have grandkids that come visit, which I'm sure you guys do, but my grandkids would be younger, so you're going to have a lot more activity with all sorts of ages. And the traffic, I know we're not going to be able to do anything about that. It's going to happen. We had a, a neighborhood meeting just at the airport that is right there. I had to turn right to go around to go down just to go basically across the street. And that's what the way it is now, not to add all the rest that you guys want to add. So I ask that you guys say nope to this one and maybe go back to, which we did bring up in the neighborhood meeting, about the existing buildings that they had initially put in 1994. I think that should be addressed. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mayman. Hi, good evening, Mayor and City Council members. Thank you for being here tonight. I am Tina Martha Whitfield, 206 Haynes Haven Lane. And we moved to our home the year it was built in 1988. We love Haynes Haven, Lane, Haynes Haven neighborhood. Um, when we moved in, Andy Adams owned a big home and there was a riding stable there and uh, Adams Place was built after that. So um, I would like to say selfishly for our neighborhood that I don't think, changes notwithstanding, that the townhomes are in keeping with our neighborhood aesthetic at all. I think that an eight to 10 foot distance between those buildings is not in keeping with what we have now between our homes that sit on the lots that they are. You can drive down and see for yourselves what I'm talking about. But um, my main concern is not for me, my main concern is for all the residents of Adams Place who have spoken tonight and I had considered possibly being a resident of Adams Place in the future myself. I will tell you, and the directors of Adams Place, I'd like to speak directly to you, the fact that you care more about future residents than your current residents to me is just unspeakably abhorrent, and I, I don't understand it at all. Um, the green space, I think that Mr. Roundtree made a reference to that not being accessed very much right now. It is accessed every single day by every resident who lives there, looks out their windows, sits on their balcony, sits on their patio, breathes that air, just enjoys that beauty. I invite every one of you, if you haven't done so, and you may have already, to walk around Adams Place. Take a half an hour and walk around the entire campus. Make a loop it's, and just enjoy the beauty and see what it is that these residents are living with right now that would be taken from them. It is gargantuan, the loss would be gargantuan, I think. And it makes me very sad to think that that could happen. Um, <clears throat> I strongly oppose the rezoning, is my point. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Victor. <coughs> Anyone else wishing to speak? for or against? Yes, ma'am. Hi, I'm Carol Clark. I live at, live at 327 Haynes Haven Lane. I won't uh, duplicate all the conversations so far, but I do want to say that I understand there's a, um, you have to deal with balancing development, growth, but we also have a community of an older neighborhood. It's an established neighborhood. And I want to live there. I choose to live there. I can live somewhere else if I want. And so I, I understand um, you know, development and growth. And I think balancing that with um, residents' needs that may counter that at times. So I um, 
object to the <laughs> rezoning, and I hope you do too. My name is John Bickford, and I appreciate you guys letting me talk for a minute. I had uh, a series of things I wanted to say, but it seems like everybody beat me to the punch. So I just want to leave one thing with you. If uh, I don't know if any of you guys live in Haynes Heaven or anything like that, but if you did, or if this situation was to come up in your neighborhood, I think you would be fighting as hard as we would. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bigford. Good evening. I'm Andy Clark with National Healthcare Corporation. I am the AVP of Development. And um, I appreciate uh, Mayor McFarland and the council members allowing us the opportunity to speak. Um, I'm speaking as part of the public hearing right now, and unless you'd like to close that and then I can respond, whatever is appropriate. Um, I t I, what would be better is let's, uh, and, and this is my fault for, I think we needed to, to hear from the development team on the proposal. So I, I would rather if it's okay, let the public hearing close and then we'll hear the from the development team. Certainly, thank you. Thank you. It's weird because I'll tell y'all I made a mistake. I should have let the development team speak before um, the public hearing. That's typically how we do it, but uh, we went ahead to try to accommodate to get everyone to speak. So we'll we'll listen to them as well. All right. Anyone else wishing to speak for or against? All right. Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing and uh, going to allow the development team to come up before we uh, get. Questions answered. <laughs> Mr. Clark. Thank Mr. You, Clark, and if you would, uh, I, I know you've heard several different concerns. Um, you're welcome to address some of those, but I think it would be good for you to present and tell us about the, the inner workings of the project. Thank you. I appreciate that opportunity. Um, we'd like to explain why are we, why we are proposing this type of project at this time. Um, of course, everybody in the, in the room has experienced a tremendous amount of growth in Murfreesboro over the past 20 plus years. Our campus uh, has tried to change along with the city. Um, we've seen Walmart come in, we've seen Memorial Boulevard widened, we've seen major multifamily developments along Memorial Boulevard. Um, our intent, our design intent from the very beginning was to create a living option, senior living option for the group that is currently not on campus. And that would be the 65 to 75 year old uh, group. Um, and, and I want to say publicly that I have used an incorrect designation of 55 plus. There are two different uh, designations, 55 plus, 65 plus, when it comes to seniors. Uh, the newer trend in active senior living is for 55 plus. It is very apparent how important the 65 plus retirement aspect of this campus is. It's very important to us. Um, we are looking to provide uh, a step between residential living and the security that is offered by independent living. But the independent living we currently have is congregate care. And there is a market and there is a need, especially here in Murfreesboro, for this um, different type of senior living option that we've proposed in the stacked flat apartments and the townhomes. And what I tasked our design team to do was to bridge that gap between what is currently at Haynes Haven subdivision and what's currently at the community. Uh, we tried 
we've, we spent an inordinate amount of time on site and in planning to try and um, maintain as many existing mature trees as we can. Uh, there are some beautiful trees there, and, and I do not, I would rather not remove any. Um, but we've positioned the tree, or the, excuse me, we've positioned the buildings so that the, the vast majority of the mature trees will stay in place. The idea along Haines Haven was to make that as residential-like as possible. Uh, although the buildings are close together, um, the way the orientation of the land is, the design allows us to put eight units in, two, in four buildings, um, essentially duplexes, um, but they would, they would mimic the neighborhood, uh, the character of the neighborhood. That, that's our goal and that's our desire. We've been focused from the very beginning to provide a high quality product. And our goal remains to do that, as well as to disrupt at a very minimum our residents and the neighbors. That's, that's our overarching goal. There have been references to the uh, CCRC designation. Um, just like Murfreesboro has grown, the, the definition has changed over time since 1994. Uh, it is still, uh, it is, uh, CCRC is to provide several levels of, of care on the same campus. Um, we have skilled nursing, we have memory care, we have assisted living, and we have independent living. 30 years ago, there was no memory care. Uh, the designation of, of memory care, Alzheimer's care. Um, we have provided that need, uh, we have helped to fill that need by providing the memory care unit that we do have on the campus. So that's an extension of our assisted living. And how I see this is this is an extension instead of toward care, but toward senior living options in, the other, in, in that way for, this, um, for the project that, we're, that we are presenting. We will address the stormwater concerns during construction. That, that is a requirement of the city. Um, we have, uh, we're committed to working with the city planning staff on that, uh, so that will be addressed if there are any deficiencies. Um, we have gone through the, the application process, the planning reviews, the, the multiple neighborhood meetings. Um, the, the planning department is in support uh, of our project uh, with conditions. Um, the planning commission has approved unanimously the project with conditions. And so we're here before you today, tonight, to ask for your um, support and approval of the project as well. We have a few others that would like to speak as well. So Buckley Winfrey is the administrator for Adams Place. Thank you, Mr. Would you Clark. like to speak? Thank you. Sure. Good evening, City Council members and Mayor McFarland. Um, as Andy said, my name is Buckley Winfrey, and I've worked with NHC for about 22 years and had the opportunity to serve as the administrator of Adams Place over the campus for nearly 17 years. And during that time, I've had the privilege of seeing many areas of growth, including other expansion projects, as they've previously said, a memory care unit in 2017, which met a new need that was needed. Um, Adams Place has been serving the community for over 25 years. We celebrated that last year. And as you know, we're located directly across the street from the airport. Um, as has already been said, we are a senior community, also known as a continuing care retirement community or a life care community. They're both used interchangeably. And our levels of care that we currently have are independent living, assisted living, and memory care, a short-term rehab, and a continuing care um, unit or better known as, as long-term care. Um, at this time, I'd like to introduce Terry Deal to come up and share more information about this project. Terry is our Executive Director of Independent Living and would be the immediate director over this operation um, if it gets approved. Good evening, evening, Mayor McFarland and City Council members. Uh, my name is Terry Deal. I'm the Executive Director of Adams Place Residential Living. 
I have been serving the seniors of Rutherford County since 2011. At that time, there were only eight senior living communities in Rutherford County. Since early 2017, we have seen three additional properties open, offering a, a combination of additional services. There are more communities today because the need in our community continues to evolve. For 25 years, Adams Place has provided top quality service to seniors. In the early days of Adams Place, our residency was comprised mostly of Murfreesboro and Rutherford County natives. Today, 50% or more of our residents come to us from outside of our county lines as they move to be closer to family. As I meet with the families every day, I'm consistently faced with individuals who are looking for something different, something that is not yet available, something that uh, is a little bit more relaxed, uh, something they want to get out of their uh, home maintenance responsibilities, out of taking care of their yard, that sort of thing. But they're not ready for congregate living, so they don't want to come to the Adams Place campus just yet. These people, uh, 65, 70, 75 years old. When the NHC development team came to me with the idea of this expansion, I was fully supportive of it because I already knew that I had people that would get on the wait list to join this community. We did take the project to our residents in May of 2022. As you've heard, uh, many of them are in opposition. I get it. Change is hard. Uh, living through construction is hard. But as a leader in this industry, I must look beyond those things and look at what will be most beneficial, not only to the ones that I serve today, but to the ones that I will be serving tomorrow. The addition of these independent living units is simply an extension of what Adams Place already does well. We are simply looking to add one more component to the retirement portion of a continuing care retirement community. Since the first meeting in May, we have listened to many concerns that the residents have expressed, and we have done our best to address many of those concerns. I appreciate the passion that my residents have for their home because that's exactly what it is. It is their home. I was not here 25 years ago. I would imagine when, uh, when Adams Place or when NHC first came to the city proposing uh, the development of Adams Place, I, I imagine there was opposition at that time, not only from Haynes Haven but other areas as well. Having the benefit of us now being able to look back over the last 25 years, we see just how beneficial Adams Place has been to this entire community. And I have absolutely no doubt that post-construction, we will be able to look back at this new development and also see the contribution, the positive contribution that it has made to the community as well. As of today, with only word of mouth talk of the expansion, I have 27 families already on my interest list. Someone referenced the wait list for uh, the current independent living. There are 36 families on the wait list to get into independent living. Several of the residents that currently live with us have already come to me and said, if this had existed, when I came to this campus, that is where I would be living today. So I know that the need is there. Reference has also been made to whether or not this new population will be working. Uh, I would venture to say that yes, some of them will be working, but I would also point out that I have residents in independent living today in my 89 apartments, I have residents that are employed on a daily basis. We have residents in assisted living that are still choosing to be employed. In the post-COVID world, uh, we have the ability to work from home remotely, and that's what a lot of people are choosing to do. The people that I speak with that are already on my interest list, some are working remotely, some are going to the office, most are retired. Most of the people that I'm speaking with are already over the age of 65. I do believe that this is a project that will be valuable, yes, to Adams Place, but more importantly, I believe that it will bring value to the city of Murfreesboro and to Rutherford County as a whole as we continue to grow. Independent living is not intended to provide health care services. 
and dependent living on a continuing care retirement community's campus is intended to give you access to health care as you age and as you develop the need for that care. Again, this proposed expansion is really nothing more than an extension of the 89 apartments in independent living that we already have. Uh, Helmut did, he, he made a, a comment a bit ago that we're not gonna put a dent in the needs of senior living, and I do, I agree. I think he's right. I think it's gonna require a whole lot more uh, facilities just like this. NHC has always been on the forefront of everything that we've ever done. We want to be on the forefront of this expansion as well. We want to be ahead of the game. We want to lead the way. We want to create the absolute best that we can create. And we want to set the standard so high that other companies are going to have to chase after us to be able to provide for their residents the same that we are providing for ours. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Teal. All right, I uh, had several questions that, um, I don't know if Mr. Huddleston wants to answer these, Mr. Bonley, so we had questions on drainage. Uh, Mr. Bonley had a question on how close are the setbacks. And I think the setbacks would just be for the the townhomes <coughs> along Haynes Haven. Yeah, the townhomes along Haynes Haven, uh, they're proposing a 40 foot setback, which would be the equivalent of what would be required uh, if it were to remain zoned RS-15. What about your side setbacks in between each individual building? Let's see. Are they five? Uh, in RS-15, the normal side setback would be 12 and a half feet. So the existing home to the west should be at least 12 and a half feet from its property line. Okay. Um, how close they are proposing here, side setback. Um, they're saying that the side setback would be 23 and a half feet. Okay. Um, drainage. For that to Mr. Huddleston. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, apologize for my first official meeting as assistant city manager and I was late, um, but <laughs> we'll be glad to try to provide First a meeting bit. and last meeting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then maybe don't need me now. <laughs> Let me try to provide you this, l a little bit of background on uh, Memorial Boulevard and, and drainage out there that was part of a, uh, a larger uh, regional system that was identified in the, in the early 90s. Uh, we, we refer to it as the 231 North Drainage Basin East and Drainage Basin West. Uh, we'd be familiar with the Drainage Basin East as being the large uh, regional retention area along Airport Road, um, east of Memorial Boulevard. That was constructed uh, inten intentionally and on purpose uh, by the city by expanding the storage volume there uh, based on a, a, a very detailed study uh, performed um, for us um, in the, in in the mid-1990s. Uh, and so we created that additional storage volume. Uh, that 231 East Basin actually flows over and over tops occasionally Memorial Boulevard into the NHC site, the Adams Place site, making its way to the northwest corner, which I think was part of the pictures that uh, Mr. Wood had for you tonight. Um, and that is also a continuation of their detention area, the back of the um, James Drive uh, properties there and the uh, Sam Haynes uh, property uh, behind Sprouts is part of 231 Drainage Basin West. Uh, that basin was also included in that study. However, rather than building all of that basin at that time because it was a relatively undeveloped basin, we've been um, working with, uh, with the projects and developments as they come along to accommodate their additional drainage. There's some requirements that they have there. Uh, and so the, the work to date by uh, Adams Place has been consistent with that regional stormwater management plan. Um, in uh, 2008, the city adopted additional stormwater management requirements over and above that study. And so new development and redevelopments in those basins have to additionally meet those new stormwater uh, requirements at the city level. Uh, the design team will, will have that task 
um, to take on as a part of a uh, site plan submittal were, were they to continue forward with this uh, plan development. Um, I think the other question was um, that, that there, there have been some episodes of flooding um, uh, that's been reported by NHC. I do recall a couple of those events. Um, it was my expectation and understanding, and maybe uh, some of the folks from Adams Place could, could give some clarity to this. I think they had taken corrective actions um, with some of their electrical services, making sure those were protected from, um, from uh, flood damage and being inactive uh, in, in the event that, that some of the areas of the site uh, were inundated with water, and they are. The pictures haven't lied. The 2010 aerial photograph that we made in May hasn't lied, there is a very significant amount of water that needs to accumulate and be managed during extreme events in this area. Um, but I, I do believe that, that Adams Place, uh, they've taken measures to, to supplement some flood protection and, and protect some of the development on their property from, from that potential uh, flood risk. Um, I, that's um, information that I have. Um, uh, to date for you, and I'd be glad to try to answer any questions that, that uh, y'all may have. Okay. Council members, that's, I, I took the majority of questions, questions were based upon uh, drainage and the, besides generally being opposed to the project. Did I, did I miss anything? All right, thank you, Mr. Ellison. I got, Matt, <coughs> I got a question. And maybe uh, this may be for Mr. Roundtree, but page 105 of the council agenda, <clears throat> it's going to the original site reference plan. It's got four red blocks basically showing the original site plan dated 1997, included 90 additional future units and two future buildings. Does that capacity still exist within Adams Place today? I guess that's the question I have. It's showing the original site plan and those two facilities. I don't know. I don't go out there. You know, I, I don't have a, a mom or a dad out there. Yeah, I think, I think the, um, you know, things have, buildings have been built since then that may preclude some of these buildings from being built exactly the way they were shown in this 1997 plan. Um, the, they certainly did not build as many units as they were approved for in, in 1994. Um, but like I mentioned, some of the, the layout may preclude some of those buildings from being built exactly as they were shown then. Back in um, 1994, they were approved for um, in four phases for yep. for this 40 nursing home beds with 84 assisted living units, 60 nursing home beds in phase two. Phase three was 90 independent living units, and phase four was 90 more independent living units. Um, and what they have built, what's on the property right now includes um, 89 apartment residential units, which I think would be the independent living units, a 23-room memory care center, and a 90-bed health care center with nursing and rehabilitation. So um, I think there are some of the, the assisted care living facility units that, that were not built, and then that phase four, 90 independent living units um, was also not. Were, not, were not built. And it was not built because... I think they would probably have to answer that question. Uh, Mr. Clark. The, uh, the phase four for the 90 additional skilled uh, nursing units, um, excuse me, for the 90 additional IL units was not built. And it, it just, at the, we had not decided to go forward uh, it just it just wasn't in our uh, business plan at the time to move forward on that. Is that space still there? It is. And so you could build. We the way that plan shows is two blocks. Correct. For the 90 units, that would be 45 units in each building. Correct. At the footprint that's shown, it would be a four-story building, and of course, where the one on the right, as you're looking at the plan, is where the memory care and the administrative services building is now. The one on the left would be where the proposed amenity center is showing okay. right now. 
but there's still capacity within Adams Place if y'all needed to add capacity with land there right now. I guess that's what I'm trying to establish. The phase four, which the residents have brought up, why not just stick with that? That could actually be executed to some degree if y'all decided to go forward with that plan, the original plan. It could be. Okay, thank you. Yes. Mr. Clark, while you're up here, just to clarify, are these 55 and up restricted or 65 and up restricted? We would operate it as a uh, 65 plus CCRC. Okay, thank you. Did he say 55 so, or 65? So 65. 65. I have a couple of comments, and not necessarily for you. So, okay. Um, you know, each time that my election comes up, I promise myself to listen to our citizens and to make informed decisions uh, based on my research and not let my emotions, you know, dictate my decisions. And this is a hard one, in a way, on the other side. Uh, my, my dad, Adams Place is a great place. My dad died at Adams Place. They took very good care of him. Um, he had to go there because at the time, the um, medical things that he needed they did not provide them at home, so we had to put them in Adam's place. They were very nice until his death. Um, my mother, she had cancer and she stayed at home, uh, eventually had hospice care, but I would hate, hate to think that at the end of her life, uh, she was, first of all, she was very peaceful, very peaceful with her environment, and I would hate to think at the end of her life that she would have to abruptly be put in a situation where scenery was different, uh, her environment was different, and that's what I'm hearing tonight with a lot of these people. You know, they enjoy where they are. They enjoy the scenery. You know, it may not seem like scenery means much to people, but I'm in that 70s group now, and I'm I'm telling you, I. I have a different outlook on life, uh, even when I see a tree, when I see a bird, and as sick as I've been, I have, I'm just so grateful to be able to see these things, uh, and it's nothing like being peaceful and wanting to disrupt people. It, uh, let's say when we're talking about changing this zone, let's say I lived in Haynes Haven and I wanted to put some pigs or donkeys in the back of my yard. But I couldn't do that because of what the zoning of the subdivision restrictions are. So I guess I'm questioning the word promise in those minutes in 94 when it was said that it will not, the zoning would not change. And then all of a sudden, it seems like we are trying to change that, which kind of upsets me a little bit. And I understand, and I've heard here tonight Everyone that got up there against it and what, 70 people signed a petition saying that they did not want this and then the, uh, at Adams Place and then the Haynes Havens people, they did not want it either. So, and I was concerned also when I heard about the flooding. I had one of the residents tell me that she had a relative that lived at Adams, was at Adams Place and it flooded and they had to uh, put them in a hotel because of the bad flooding problems they have there. I don't know if that still exists, uh, flooding there at Adams Place. I'm not gonna talk about affordability because um, today they say in some of these apartments are 2,000, I can't see how, and they say that's average, so I, I don't understand that, so I'm not gonna even address that. Um, I know the Bible talks about they're always gonna be the poor among us, but at, it also says we are to help take care of each other. So disrupting lives to me, you know, the Bible said what you do unto them, you do up to the least of us, you do unto me. So, you know, I just want us to think more about that. Um, I put some notes here. Um, Mayor and council members, we are here to protect our city and we're also here to protect our citizens of our city and what I'm hearing about this, the seniors, it's noise, it's gonna be noise, they don't want that, not seniors, but the residents, I'm sorry. Um, it's gonna be more water problems, uh, deteriorating landscape, it's gonna be traffic problems, uh, um, 
And one big thing, and I drove this last week, there are two school zones on Memorial, and then we have Northfield, and that traffic is just gonna be, I mean, I just, it's a lot. So uh, I just wanted to give my opinion. I think you've got a special place. I mean, I'm 56. I don't know how much longer I'll work. You know, maybe I uh, will work another 20 years. But Adams Place is the place I would want to be, uh, like a lot of your constituents, your customers have chosen. It's a special place. I mean, I wish I could get my mother over there. Um, that being said, you know, I've heard a lot of stuff tonight about the age concern. You've said it's now 65 and up, which I think that's wonderful. Um, but you also have the capacity within there, even if it was just one of those independent living buildings, to put in 40, 45 units. Um, the Haynes Haven, which is RS-15, and then across the street it's RS-15. I go back to the 1994 agreement to where you know that was promised to keep that as RS-15 and keep it as a buffer. Um, at the end of the day, you've got a great place, uh, a great environment. You've got a lot of people that seem to be very happy there. Uh, and I'm glad you're listening to them on the age, on the 65. But at the end of the day, um, I can't support it. Um, you've got RS-15. It was agreed in 1994 to keep it as RS-15. And so I would uh, respectfully, I'm going to submit a motion to deny. I'd, I'd like to, can, is it appropriate for me to speak? Not yet. I want to say, I want to say um, we have a motion, but Mr. Maxwell, if you don't mind, before there's a second, um, there's, I think there's still some other council members who haven't been that's able to, to Totally speak fine. To yeah. I, I can come back to that. Okay. But that's, that's how I feel. Yeah. That's Mr. Clark, you're, you're fine to sit down. Uh, I, I don't I've want you to some questions. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. So I didn't want you just, to just a question. Cause I, we've had some comments about the waiting list at Adams place. Could you, what is the waiting list that exists for the, for the facilities that it exists today? I'll let Terry speak to that. Okay. Thanks. Could you restate the question, please? The waiting list, does it exist for the facility that you have today? It exists for the facility I have today, yes, sir. I have 36 families on that wait list as of today. Now, that's not the proposed. No, sir. So that is for the existing, existing independent living 89 apartments that currently exist today. So this is the question for Mr. Clark. As you're doing your planning, why did you decide? I mean, is it just a money factor? Is it just we're having a different product on our facility, a different something to sell the community? I mean, because it seems like you, you know what you're doing and you're obviously doing a wonderful job with the way you've formatted your, your product and your business model as it exists. You're a vital part of our community, loved and cherished for what you contribute and how you do it. Why didn't you just grow the facility as you had planned it to be instead of going off into something that's going to be, you know, apparently controversial with well, your existing residents and the residents that are current. A lot of things go into the decision and, right. and that would have been the path of least resistance to go for the 90 units, uh, the independent living units. Um, and we thought through that. We thought through, do we want to put 90 units there with everything else that's already happened to the campus? How would we uh, orient that? Where would it go within the PUD? Um, and and we, we decided not to maximize that request. We decided to down, uh, downgrade the density. And the thought was the RS-15 lots were RS-15 before the PUD was submitted back in 1994. Right. The comment was that they would remain as they currently were. They would not be pulled into the PUD at the time. Two different, two different situations. 
the, the idea now is that the, those RS-15 lots we can integrate into the campus and still maintain a residential look. So it's, it's, it's 53 units versus the 90 that are allowed, but it's over a greater area, so there is less density uh, per acre. But, but I'm, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll wait and I'll ask. Oh, I, no. I, I, I'm just, we, we shifted from our model. Our business model is shifting, right? Isn't it's always shifting. Well, I, well, I understand, but I mean, what you're, the couple of questions here, I mean, you're not going to have to take retirement out of what you, this is not a CCRC anymore. No, it, it will be a CCRC. It is intended for retired people. Well, the 65? 65 and 7 to 75 the units that you're talking you're proposing mm -hmm. is still going to be retired people yes okay. and it will be some that are working there are some that are working now hmm. okay I'm not sure I understand would you like to speak to that? It, if I may a, a couple of things so yes going to your point about whether they're going to fall into the guidelines of a retirement community. Right. Again, remember that a few minutes ago when I was speaking, I pointed out that I have residents living on our campus today, both in independent living and in assisted living that are still working. Right. So technically they are not retired, yet they are living in a retirement center. So, you know, focusing on the 65 and up age category, there are going to still be some people over the age of 65 who choose to work. And, you know, again, it may be uh, working remotely. It may be going into their office. But it's the choice that they're making as they age. Um, I also want to go back to the question that you were asking about the different model. Why not just go ahead and, and do what we're yeah, doing we're right now? Right. So going back to that wait list, the 36 families that I have on the wait list <coughs> for the existing independent living, I have, I have two separate lists. I have a, a wait list for my existing independent living building, and I have an interest list for the proposed expansion, okay? So two different lists. The individuals, the, the 36 families that are on the wait list for the independent living, the existing one today, those are individuals who are wanting to join the part of campus that is congregate living, that provides a meal in your package, that provides driver service, housekeeping service, built-in activities. Uh, basically walk outside of your front door and you're in the midst of community. Everything is under one, uh, under one roof. The expansion that we're proposing that has the 27 families on that interest list, these are individuals that have come to me and said, I'm ready to step out of home ownership, out of the responsibilities of raking my leaves and taking care of the roof and all that sort of thing, fixing the things when they break. But I don't want congregate living. I don't need somebody to come clean my house and change my sheets every week, or if I do, I'm going to bring in my own personal housekeeper. Uh, I don't need a driver service. I don't need to ride the bus anywhere. So the, the 27 families are simply people who don't want to take care of their homes anymore, but they're really not ready for the congregate living that my existing residents have right now. So it's two separate lists. Uh, the clientele, even in my building, Janine said that when she moved on to campus, she was 67 years old. Um, I, I don't remember if I mentioned it a minute ago. I've got residents that tell me if, if this had existed, they would be there right now. They would not have gone to the assisted living, okay? So we just, I, I want y'all to, re to realize it's two different wait lists that I'm dealing with and the re, or not wait lists either, a wait list and an interest list. And the reason for the two different lists is because it's the, the groups of people want something different, but they want to <coughs> be on a campus where they can age in place and have access to the higher levels of health care that they need as they're aging. Any questions about that? Uh, folks, if y'all will, uh, we, we want to listen to everything. So if, if you'll let them speak, then it, it helps us tremendously to be able to focus and listen.
Mr. Shacklett, you look like you still have questions. <laughs> I, I have a, a couple of a couple of issues that I'm just not sure why we shifted the our business model. You know, if it, if it, and I, I don't know if that's. And I, I seem like we're, we're doing something right, and and it, and I'm not sure why we shifted the business model to. Terry, I've got a question for you. You said there's 36 on the list. 36 on the wait list for what I have built today. What you have built today. Yes, sir. Okay. And 27 on the interest list for the, pr the proposed expansion. Yes, sir. Mayor and council members, my name is Josh McCreary. I'm the senior vice president and general counsel at NHC. I want to clarify one item around the age limitation discussion that has gone on. We've heard lots of ages, 55, 65, we've heard CCRC and so forth. Let me clarify that a little bit. I hope this clarifies it and doesn't muddy the water, but um, HUD regulations allow for what's called an age targeted facility. It's age 55 and up. Um, that is what we will operate under with this new proposed um, facility. It's age targeted 55 and up. That's what we're operating now at Adams Place, an age targeted facility. The term CCRC is really a term that appears in the Internal Revenue Code. It's a whole different category of law dealing with whether or not the facility in question is tax exempt. So it's really a whole different issue from the one we're discussing now. When you look back at the 1994 approval, there's nothing in there that talks about age restriction. It doesn't say in the actual um, uh, zoning approval whether or not it'll be age 55 or 65 or 62 or anything else. So we have operated it compliant with the law since 1994. In addition, we've talked a lot about retirement as if there's some automatic connection between retirement and age. The law doesn't recognize that distinction. The law talks about age. These are age targeted facilities. It's irrelevant whether or not the person is retired or working. That's true now under our current regulations, the way we operate now, we could have residents who are free to work. There's no restriction otherwise. That's not in the law. That's not in the approval from 1994. That's not in an appro in a approval or request that we're making now. So it, I hope it, that clarifies it. Well, it, let me ask a question sure. then. When you say targeted, does it, yeah. so what is the, what kind of constraint or control do you have over that if you just say is that more advertising or is it I mean if somebody's 54 and yep. I mean they can't make it in our bill we won't will not rent to them or buy they can't buy their town in, in part yes there there are specific HUD requirements that include your advertising you have to advertise in a targeted way you have to have a percentage of your um, units occupied by people who meet the category and you have to get proof from those people, things like driver's licenses and things like that, to establish their, um, their age. Yep. So that's how it's policed under the HUD regulations. Which is the way it's being done now. That's what yes, you're sir. That's, that's what's been done now. Compliant with the law. Yes, sir. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Mike. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, uh, members of the council, my name is Mike Ustry. I'm the president and chief operating officer with NHC. And I, I wanted to, if I could, Mr. Shacklett, address your, your question about why not just continue what, keep doing what we've been doing, so to speak. And there's been a lot of discussion in here. Uh, you know, one of the big issues is, the most painful part of this for me to sit here is, I've been in Murfreesboro for a long time, and I know a lot of these people personally, and it's, and it's difficult. And, and much of the challenge is dealing with the change, whether it's a change of our model or dealing with the change that'll be involved if we do this project, regardless of what the project looked like and the disruption. And, and that's, that's something that's hard on me to accept as well. I would, I would, in answer to your question, I would say the reason that we're looking at this is as Murfreesboro has changed, senior living has changed. The senior living offering that we're proposing to do on this property is much more typical today. What You wouldn't have seen the townhomes. You wouldn't have seen uh, the, the type construction. You would have seen more of the congregate living as, as Terry described a little earlier. This is much more 
common today to provide a variety of, in, in this case, total independent uh, residents would be parts of this, but also that want to become a part of a community where, in many cases, some of these residents that are in a townhome may choose ultimately that, well, I think I need to be in independent living next door, and they may, may very well be there. It's to provide a range of services. And really, that's been, <coughs> excuse me, a part of our model all along. We were, just as an example, no bricks and sticks involved. We were the first home health provider in the state of Tennessee. So the, the providing the entire range of services to seniors is really our vision. And that's why not just another 245 unit boxes, if you will, out front, but something that we think is, is more of a residential nature and, and provides still the, the security of being on our campus. Well, I think, uh, and I, I, I'm almost tell you that uh, I've been around a long time in this community too, Mike. Uh, Adams Place has set a standard for senior care and the vision for continuing care over a long period of time. Someone starts at a place and ends at a place. But my concern is that you have done and set such a beautiful place that has its own aesthetic value to the citizens and their expectations. And one of the things when I first ran for public office was trying to help people understand reasonable expectations of what the future is going to hold. And with all the changes that have happened, help people to understand to whether you're a new person or you're an existing resident, try to help them see what do they expect. And when they went to your facility, they had reasonable expectations as to what that, that quality of life was gonna look like. And I'd love to see NHC do this. I just wish it was somewhere else. I wish it was another place. <laughs> I, the two things I know, if NHC does this type of project, uh, product, it will be done right, it will be managed right, and it will be a true asset to our community. But I don't think you have to ying and take away from some the quality of life and the, the jewel that you've created in Adam's place. I don't think you have to take away from that to get this other option. I, I, you've, you're fully vested in this community. You have done so much in our community. I just know that there's the perfect place somewhere that doesn't create a burden on traffic and some of these other things. And, and still maintains the jewel that Adams Place is. Thank you, Mr. Shacklett, and, and, and I appreciate that. And after she's saying all those nice things, I hate to say but. And <laughs> <laughs> I, I I'm used to that. <laughs> I appreciate that very much. And, and let me tell you, first of all, we do intend to do it right. I know you would. Number two is the aesthetics are vitally important to us too. And although it will be different, I believe that this campus will be something that the residents will be proud of. Will there be challenges between today and getting it done? Certainly. But it absolutely is our intent that we would continue to have a campus providing some green spaces, not the same one, but green spaces focused on maintaining as much of the greenery, the, the landscaping, the, the mature trees as is, is absolutely possible. But I appreciate your comments, sir. I have a question for Mr. Roundtree, or, or who the, um, th there's been a lot of talk as far as going back to the 1994 site plan and that the site, it was approved for another 90 plus units. But it, it, as the site is laid out right now with the corner in the RS-15, how much could be put on there without asking, I mean, so like, yeah, you could get 95 units, but how many can you actually build with what is existing there at Adams, at Adams Place right now? Uh, well, see, the, the, the you know, because we talked about the, the block on the right, that's where um, the administrative building, I think the memory care unit is there to the right, so that can't be developed now. How much could be put on the existing site? 
the way without going eight stories tall. No, I, I think as Mr. Trustee said, that there, and Andy said as well, there's a chance that we could um, accommodate the original plan to some degree. Uh, as Andy mentioned, where the memory care is, that was where one of those towers was going to be. So that that's negated that opportunity. So they're basically flanking the existing structure. For us to do any kind of comparable construction, now we're basically working along that southern wall, which means that where the amenity center is, where the covered parking is, everything that's in that space would now be vertical construction. The site is reduced. When we take out those RS-15 lots on the original PUD, we become a lot tighter. So now we have two towers on an existing structure with adequate parking, with vehicular circulation, that green space that is so valuable is threatened by that process. We are, we are gonna make a much more of an urban, compact yeah. campus as a result of following the, the predecessor to this plan. I think I'm, that may be, I, I think not to interrupt you, I think that may be the issue. I probably wouldn't use the word urban and compact because that's not what you have there right now. It's not urban and compact. It, it, and I, this is where I'm, what I'm struggling with, and just full disclosure, I, you know, some of this information we were searching today to get the minutes back from 1994. So while everyone was talking, I was reading through a lot of the minutes back in 1994, and then going back and looking when Roy Lee Waldron developed Haynes Haven, and it was platted in 1978. So you know that original section of, of Haynes Haven was there in 1978 before Adams Place came in 16 years later. So there's the part I'm struggling with, and I think we talked about this when we met to look at the project, there, there was a reason why the council in 94 or someone at Adams left those Haynes Haven lots out as RS-15 lots. There's, a, there's you know, the, the, the whole time I've looked at it and I've, I think the project has some very good merits and, and I'm not completely opposed to saying, look, you know, the areas that you did have, there's been some yin and yang. You have added things that originally weren't supposed to be there, but I'm struggling with those townhomes as you go down Haynes Haven, those eight units, because I, I know y'all done a great job to try to get them to blend in, but that's not what was originally done in 78, and that's not what the council agreed to in 94 mm -hmm. the other area where you know it showed the walking trails and some of those things i, I mean I, I think finding a way to improve and make a business decision in your development i mean we don't it's not anytime government tries to get involved in running your business it never goes well mm -hmm. and so i would rather y'all be running your business and asking us how you can improve it as opposed to us trying to figure it out for you so those are the things i'm i'm but like I, the one thing to the residents out there that I thought about, if I'm, my mom and dad just celebrated their 49th anniversary today, mm -hmm. and I think that if my mom and dad were in Adam's place, how cool it would be for me to be able to live in one of those apartments, <laughs> to be able to see my mom and dad, you know, right. and, and so I, that's one of the things I thought, well, hey, that could be a benefit that when, when I'm in my 60s and they're in their 80s, that I could be on the same campus with them. So I do think there's some, some benefits I'm just having trouble with that, um, with that, with with the, with the townhomes along Haynes Haven. I'm going to make a second what Shane said. When somebody, when government gets involved with a, how a company is running their company and what they want to do with their company, I, I can't get behind that. I'm a, I'm senior real estate specialized. I have an accreditation with the National Association of Realtors about senior living. Uh, and the age targeted where, uh, where age restricted thing kind of gets me hooked up. Uh, if you've got an age targeted community, it's, it's 80%, you can go actually go 20% of your community under the age target. And so you could have people that don't even qualify in that necessarily with age targeted, where if it was 65 and age restricted, th those are two major, major differences in my case. Uh, I, I'm kind of like Shane. I, I like the project overall, and I, I think NHC would do a great job of it. Uh, I, I'm, I'm really looking towards Haynes Haven residents, and I look at the Adams uh, Place residents. To me, the, I, I've been thinking about this Adams Place residents. 
that is a a business decision that you guys are making towards your own residents. That's not with me making a call. I'm 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 looking at you going. You're making a business decision, so that's that's a business decision that you guys have got to make. I'm I'm sympathetic to the Haynes Haven uh, the, uh, neighborhood right beside it. That what are they going to look at? Things like that. I, I'm I'm not a no, but I'm not a I'm, I'm like in the middle. <laughs> Mayor, I don't, I don't yes, um, know if this is permitted under your rules or not, but if so, I'd like to request it, and that is that if there's an opportunity to defer our application. I think given the comments and the comments from the stakeholders and the adjacent neighborhood and yours, it would benefit all of us to take a little bit of time to revisit this, maybe have a few more conversations with the folks in this room with uh, planning staff and so forth. Is that permitted under your rules? We have a, we have a motion for a denial if, if Mr. But we don't have a second on that motion. So it, we can wait. Oh, did you? I'll second. Okay. So we have a motion a second, unless you would be willing to withdraw for a I'll, I'll leave it as is. And okay. if they want to reapply, then so be it. Josh uh, or Mr. Baker, give us a second. Um, sure. we, we had a motion on the floor for denial, but let's Good. let's take that vote. Yes, so a yes vote would be for denial. So Miss uh, Ms. Brown, please call the roll. Miss Saberwater? No. Miss Gales Harris? Yes. Miss Mr. Maxwell? Yes. Vice Mayor Shacklett? No. Mr. Wright? No. Mayor McFarland? No. I move that we defer. Second. We have a motion to defer. Ms. Brown, please call the roll. Ms. Averwater? Yes. Ms. Gales Harris? No. Mr. Maxwell? No. Vice Mayor Shacklett? Yes. Mr. Wright? Yes. Mayor McFarland? Yes. Motion defer. Right. defer. So for the residents uh, of Adams Place and Haynes Haven, uh, you, you probably already know this. I'm going to go ahead and explain it. We don't, Councilman mm -hmm. Averwater and Wright get to see this at um, at Planning Commission for us on the council this is our first time really that we see these besides you know an applicant meeting wanting to meet with us us having discussions with our staff and, and I'll tell you in the years that I've done this and, and I think anyone that we meet with or I meet with I'll tell you I'll never make up my decision on how I'm gonna vote until after a public hearing because sure as the world someone's gonna bring up a point that I never even thought about and that changes where you are so where we are now, this has been deferred by council. Um, the applicant and neighbors, you have the opportunity to continue to talk to council, continue sending us emails. We'll individually meet and talk with, with staff, and then it will be publicized when it will come back up for discussion. All right? Thank you all. All right, thank you. All right, I'm gonna give um, a five minute recess to let everyone um, have time to clear out so we can move to the next portion of our business. We'll stand in recess for five minutes.
that fall out of their fridge? It was <laughs> All right, welcome back. Um, after our recess, we are going to move to item nine. This is a sewer allocation variance for, for Memorial, Memorial Boulevard, High V. Mr. Barbie. We're not used to seeing you come up with sewer allocation variances. Yeah, I was looking around. <laughs> Welcome to the Yeah. I did prepare a PowerPoint for tonight. <laughs> yeah. Shade. Uh, I'm just kidding. Now, I'll, I will make this short, sweet, and to the point. Tonight, I have a sewer allocation variance request for a Hy-Vee grocery store and convenience market at the intersection of Memorial Boulevard and Haynes Drive. Um, the um, operation of this grocery store is a little bit different because it does have restaurant activities within it. So it does have a little bit higher water usage uh, than what you would see with a normal grocery store. Uh, the request is for an additional 5.5 single family units for the grocery store itself. And also an additional 2.75 single family units for the separate convenience market. Uh, the staff has evaluated the request and believes that the creation of jobs and the extra ta additional tax revenue from sales outweigh the additional sewer capacity. Where at on Memorial is this exactly? This will be the northwest corner, um, be to the directly Haynes. across the street from the former State Farm okay. um, business. I don't remember the drugstore uh, that was across on the used to be Rite Aid. Rite Aid, and it would be kind of diagonal across from the sports con property. Any questions for Mr. Barbie? So roughly seven SFUs? Um, between the two combined, it would be uh, 8.25 combining the two. It is two separate properties. That gets Darren Gore excited. <laughs> Number one at number two. <laughs> Make questions? a motion to, I'm oh, so moved. Second. second. Motion and second. Please call the roll. Ms. Averwater. Aye. Ms. Skills Harris. Aye. Mr. Maxwell. Aye. Vice Mayor Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Wright. Yes. Mayor McFarland. Aye. All right. We have Planning Commission recommendations. Mr. Palmley. Thank you, Mayor. We have uh, five public hearings to schedule. Um, Planning Commission voted to recommend approval for our, all five, and we would recommend a public hearing date of March the 2nd. So moved. Second. A motion and second. Please call the roll. Ms. Averwater. Aye. Ms. Skills Harris. Aye. Mr. Maxwell. Aye. Vice Mayor Shocklet. Aye. Mr. Wright. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. Thank you, Mr. Palmley. All right, we're going to move to Resolution 23RPH01, Salem Highway and Barfield Road Special Sanitary Sewer Assessment District Public Hearing Recommendation. Mayor, Council, thank you for the opportunity tonight. And following a Planning Commission recommendation, where uh, uh, you have a, a resolution uh, recommending a public hearing for uh, the Salem Highway Barfield Road uh, Special Sanitary Sewer Assessment District for uh, March 2nd. So we would uh, request your approval for having that public hearing that date. The map of the special of the area affected is on page 138, I think of your, I didn't bring up, I, I brought a PowerPoint, but I figured y'all didn't want to see it. <laughs> Any questions? So move. Second. Motion to second, please call the roll. Ms. Averwater? Aye. Ms. Gales Harris? Aye. Mr. Maxwell? Aye. Vice Mayor Shacklett? Aye. Mr. Wright? Aye. Mayor McFarland? Aye. Thank you. Hey, and Mr. Mom is already gone, um, but our our meeting on March the 1st, or is that March 2nd? Because we have the Planning Commission joint meeting on March 1st, correct? Right. Yes. That was, that was March 2nd, the date? That they, yes. Okay. All right. If it tells y'all where my head's at, I was just going to ask that we can have some food there for that meeting if we're going to be there from 3 o'clock uh -huh. until 8 o'clock. So. It will be. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, resolution 23 RP8. Excuse me. Uh, on motion, uh, purchase of SCBAs for two new apparatus. Two new apparatus. Is it, I, I was going to say scuba. Isn't that, is that correct? Yeah. Uh, good evening, Mayor and members of Council. The uh, SCBA is self-contained breathing apparatus. I come to you tonight to... Uh, asked approval for purchase of 12 
SCBA, self-contained breathing apparatus. Each of the 12 units include the mask with two cylinders in the co of, at the cost of $114,247. Six of the SCBAs are for the new ladder due to uh, be delivered in March, and the other six are for the new fire engine uh, set for a delivery date sometimes in October. Uh, MFRD requests approval of this purchase through the HGAC Cooperative Purchase Program agreement with EVS and the total expenditure of $114,247 will be funded through the uh, 2021 CIP budget. Yeah. <clears throat> if there's any questions, I'll be available to answer. Is it 12 or two? 12. 12, okay. okay. And it's uh, six for each unit that's coming in for our new lighter truck that is due in next, uh, well then March, then uh, new engine that's due in in October. Move for approval. Second. Motion to second. Please call the roll. Ms. Averwater? Aye. Ms. Scales Harris? Aye. Mr. Maxwell? Aye. Vice Mayor Shacklett? Aye. Mr. Wright? Aye. Mayor McFarland? Aye. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Chief. All right, we'll move to the purchase of rollout garbage carts. Russell. Hey, thank you, Mayor and Council. Good evening. Uh, before you is a request is a request to approve the purchase of fourteen hundred and four rollout garbage carts uh, for new customers and to replace uh, damaged carts of existing customers. Uh, solid waste department requires new rollout carts for new residents, uh, replace ones that are irreparable. Uh, the equipment will be purchased from Riri Pacific Company through a cooperative purchasing Omni contract. Uh, this expense is $93,610 and is funded in the FY23 solid waste operating budget. I'm available for any questions. I move for approval. Second. Motion second. Ms. Averwater? Aye. Ms. Gales Harris? Aye. Mr. Maxwell? Aye. Vice Mayor Shacklett? Aye. Mr. Wright? Aye. Mayor McFarland? Aye. Hey, Russell, what's our total count of um, residential cans that we're picking up on a weekly basis now? Uh, so we're, we're bumping the 50,000 range. We're, we're low 49,000 right now. Okay. Thank you. All right, we have uh, no board and commission appointments, but we do have a beer permit. We have one regular permit for an ownership and name change for a restaurant at 1722 South Rutherford Boulevard. The applicants met requirements for a permit and is recommended for approval pending building <coughs> codes final inspection. So moved. Second. Motion second. Please call the roll. Ms. Averwater? Aye. Ms. Gales Harris? Aye. Mr. Maxwell? Aye. Vice Mayor Shacklett? Aye. Mr. Wright? Aye. Mayor McFarland? Aye. All right. Uh, any statements to be paid? No, sir. Any other business from staff? No, uh, we'll uh, plan on meeting on February the 2nd, so no meeting next week. Any other business from council? So we're meeting next week on the 2nd. No meeting next no week. No meeting. No meeting next week. Yeah. Jamie, you can meet if you want to. But. You said it. Okay. <laughs> I was listening. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good, good point there. <laughs> All right, any, any business from council? All right, seeing none, we'll stand adjourned.